I'm Michelle Brubaker. I'm 39 years old. I'm the mom of two young boys. And recently, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And even just saying that feels surreal to me because that is not something I ever thought would be part of my life. I had been doing a lot of yoga and my arm and armpit area just was really sore and I thought maybe I had pulled a muscle. But it, it really wasn't going away. And so one night I was sitting on the couch and was kind of feeling around and felt this, what I've now learned is an enlarged, was an enlarged lymph node. And it was about the size of um, a cherry tomato. My gut was telling me that something was wrong. The day that I went in to get my mammogram and ultrasound was an incredibly difficult day because after they did the ultrasound, the tech asked me if I had a loved one in the waiting room and then I knew it was bad. And I started crying really hard and um, The radiologist came in and he confirmed what my gut was telling me, that they had found a mass in my left breast and that there were enlarged lymph nodes in the area. We feel like we're in the prime of our life. We have all these plans for our life. And no, this is not supposed to happen. So I was scared and I was mad and I was overwhelmed. The beginning is so hard, it's so hard because you have so many unknowns and my anxiety was trying to fill those holes with really scary thoughts. And then the super, super scary part came and that's when I had to go through a list of tests to find out if it had spread throughout my body. And I will never forget that day because it was one of the hardest days of my life. I went through the CT scan, then I had an MRI, then I had a biopsy all in one day. I was completely emotionally, physically, mentally drained. Um, but each result came back with encouraging news. And once I got those results, I said to myself, I am gonna go from warrior to warrior, and I'm gonna fight because I'm a mom, and that's what moms do. After talking to our incredible oncology team, we realized we have to be in this clinical trial. This is going to save my life. We are constantly trying to bring new drugs into the treatment of breast cancer. So what we do now is we use the medical treatments before surgery so we can see how the cancer responds. We also gain, get samples from those tumors so we can figure out why certain cancers are responding or not responding to particular drugs and that even helps us to develop new drugs that target some of these abnormalities in the cancer that we've, we're able to learn about. We can see if a particular protein causes resistance to a particular treatment, we can tell that to the, the scientists and have them work on developing drugs that will target that. So these are the magic cancer killing pills. I take four daily and I feel like when I take them that I'm kicking butt and I visualize these pills killing the cancer. So I just got done with my first chemo treatment and I'm wearing my hot pink Ugg boots that were a huge hit and I feel really good. I had my um first chemo treatment March 20th, the first day of spring. 
my first day, I sat there and I said to myself, I'm going to do this. I'm doing this. And I had so many people come to visit me. My coworkers brought shirts that they made. My mom was there. My husband was there. It made the process a lot more positive and I'm very fortunate that I have an incredible village of support with family and friends and co-workers and people who I don't even know who have shared their story with me and have given me hope and encouragement. It has started. Okay. My second round of chemo was incredibly difficult. I felt awful. I felt really terrible and I cried and I had a moment of feeling sorry for myself and just, this sucks, I hate it, I, don't, I wish I didn't have to feel this way. And I realized I'm gonna have moments like that and that's okay and it's gonna be ugly and it's not always gonna be super positive but what's important to me is that I'm able to pick myself back up and face the next day. I couldn't even say the word cancer when I was diagnosed. I couldn't even say it. And now not only can I say it, but I'm, I'm telling it to get the hell out of here. Because <laughs> I, have, I have a full life to live. So it is now December 2017, and it's been nine months since I was diagnosed with breast cancer. A lot has happened in the past nine months. So every time I brush my hair now, this is how much hair comes off my brush. My hair is majorly shedding. And I don't know if you can tell, but I have no more eyebrows. I decided when my hair started to fall out that I was gonna take control of the situation. We had a shaving party and my five-year-old actually helped me okay. shave my head and my two-year-old took the hair that was falling on the ground and put it in the garbage can. So they each had a job and I think us having a good time surrounding that moment made it a lot less scary for our kids. Well, as we take each step, we just, we talk to them about it and we make them part of the process and we involve them. I was very self-conscious about having a bald head, so I wore a wig or a beanie out in public. You look in the mirror and it's not the person you were before. You're hairless and you look really weird when you're hairless. The last day of chemo, I got to ring the bell at Morris Cancer Center, which is um, a symbol of a okay, huge well, chapter cold. being closed. It says, ring this bell three times well. I will ring it well. <laughs> it's told to clearly say, my treatment's done, this course is run, and I am on my way. All right. <laughs> Woo that was more than three times, but I had to do it. <laughs> and I was really happy and I was really overcome with the love that was surrounding me, but I also was guarded. And I felt like I couldn't completely celebrate like everybody else was celebrating around me. And I find myself just like looking for the next bus that's gonna hit me. Um, that is incredibly important information to know because now my sister and other members of my family can get tested and make preventative life-saving decisions for themselves. 
for women who are high risk of getting another breast cancer, either because of, they, of them carrying the gene for breast cancer, the BRCA gene, or there are other genes that can cause breast cancer, or they've had a lot of things going on in their breasts, like atypical cells and stuff, then they often might choose a mastectomy and a mastectomy on the other side to try to also reduce that risk. Reducing risk doesn't necessarily reduce death from breast cancer, but it reduces the risk of going through breast cancer treatment again. And so it's always going to be an option for a woman who meets one of those criteria. I will say that it was a much more intense process than I anticipated and I was in so much pain. I had to be propped up with pillows all around me to sleep. I still have to sleep on my back, um, which I'm a side sleeper, so that part kind of sucked. Um, the whole process got real fast. I am getting reconstruction. So my surgeon started that process after the mastectomy, which means that after the breast tissue was removed, she put in expanders. You have tubing that's going from inside your skin to these big airtight bulbs on the side of you and they're attached to you. It's been taxing on me. It's been taxing on our marriage. It's been taxing on every aspect of my life. My pathology report from surgery came back and it showed a complete response. And that means that they could not find cancer left in my breast tissue, in my lymph nodes, um, or my bloodstream. So that is the ultimate goal. Like I accomplished it. I'm trying to put my dukes down a little bit and to celebrate where I'm at. Um, but I am still a bit in the eye of the storm. I still have a road. And um, I think every day I start to celebrate a little bit more. And I think the what ifs, I think with cancer for me, the mental part and the emotional part have been so much harder than the physical part. you have to be your own advocate. You have to do your homework. You have to ask the right questions. You can't be afraid to challenge your medical team. I spent an entire day one day emailing questions, set, sending links, links to studies, um, challenging them. They would give me information back and I would ask questions about that and then I would send more information. And I wanted to know that when I made my decision that it was an educated one and that it was the right one for me. I don't think it's going to end up getting faster than that. Yeah. So I'm waiting for the text to come get me to start my proton session. Um, I can say that halfway through I'm definitely feeling fatigued. Um, I think part of that is just logistically coming here Monday through Friday and throwing yet another thing into my already crazy schedule. Um, and then, you know, the other part is just what the proton therapy is doing, which they told me that fatigue and pink skin would be the major side effects. And I'm definitely starting to get some pink skin. I don't know if you can see, but right here is starting to look like a sunburn. So I'm using a lot of different oils and lotions and that seems to be managing it so far. So we'll see. For women with breast cancer, um, whether it's on the right side or the left side, um, because the heart is in the middle of the chest, maybe a little bit off to the left side, one of the problems with radiation treatment is, is um, causing cardiovascular disease for women who survive breast cancer years and really decades into the future. Um, with proton therapy, one of the thoughts is that we can deliver less radiation incidentally to the heart 
um, and therefore de diminish their risk of having cardiovascular disease in the future. So this trial is really um, designed to prove that point. The team is just remarkable. Um, they work together so closely and you feel like you are their only patient. Unfortunately, I know that's not true. Other people are going through this. But, I mean, this team has just given my husband and I the confidence that we are gonna get through this. I want my boys to watch this when they're older and to be really proud of mommy. You know, in the beginning, I used to think they would do things and we would experience things as a family. And I would be afraid that that was gonna be the last time <laughs> that I would see that or be there for that and that was so scary and now I feel like wow like I I have these possibilities now to watch them grow up and to see them graduate college and start their own families like I truly feel now like I have those opportunities and, and that, that's everything.